Well, good morning. It is good to be in worship together this morning, uh, whether you are joining us here in the sanctuary or online. Good morning to our online congregation. Um, just as a reminder, we have all of our announcements, all of our activities and events and everything coming up um, and ways to plug in um, with our community and just events and everything coming up in our bulletin, which is also online and here in the sanctuary. Um, I know later on we'll have announcements. Um, sometimes we don't always get to all the announcements, but all of the information that we have for you is in our bulletin. For our online community, if you would like to just say hello and check in with us as you feel comfortable, uh, there is the link there in the comment section. Um, and for here, we would have checked in here. Uh, so. Church, this morning, may we just meet today with love. May we see today as the right day to show kindness, um, to step to those who are lost and hurting with everlasting hope. May we respond with God's certain love. May we surrender with the reminder that God is good all the time. May we remember that God is in control, and may we meet today with love. So I invite you to stand and join us in our call to worship that's shown on the screen. Sing praise to God who has come to our aid, who answers when we call and leads us to wholeness. You have turned our mourning into dancing. You have clothed us with joy that we might sing praise to you and not be silent. O oh Lord, our God, we give you thanks forever. Amen. Let us stand and sing, Come Christians Join to Sing, number 158 in our hymnal. in prayer that will be shown on the screen. Our Heavenly Father, we, your humble children, invoke your blessing upon us. We adore you, whose name is love, whose nature is compassion, whose presence is joy, whose word is truth, whose spirit is goodness, whose holiness is beauty, whose will is peace, whose service is perfect freedom, and in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life. Unto you be all honor and all glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Church, you may be seated.
Continuing with our sermon series, Story Time, Echoes of Faith. Uh, this morning's story is called The Friendship. So, not friendship, but the friendship. There's our little map of where we're going. <laughs> Hedgehog was curled up in a prickly little ball in the lonely little nook of a lonely little tree where she heard someone say her name. Poor hedgehog seems so lonely. I know, but it will get better. Friendship is out there. All she has to do is look. Hedgehog jumped up. The friendship is out there. All I have to do is look. And she got to work at once. If you can kind of, and if you can kind of see on the ship on the page beforehand, there was a main mast, the main royal, uh, and then over at the front there were friends. What you doing? asked a curious little beaver. I'm sailing the seas in search of the friendship, said Hedgehog. The friendship? said the beaver. Can I come? I want a friend. Oh yes, said the Hedgehog, and the two set off. They had not sailed long when they came upon a herd of migrating deer. Excuse me, called the hedgehog. Have you seen the friendship? The friendship? Man, I could use a friend. Me too. Me too. Me too. Hasn't been the same since old Irving left us. Can we come? Oh, yes, said Hedgehog. Double yes, said the beaver, and they all sailed on. Excuse me, called the hedgehog to a little rat. Have you seen the friendship? The friendship, said the rat. No, but pretty please, with stinky cheese, can I come? Oh, yes, said hedgehog. Double yes, said beaver. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, it is, yes, said the deer. And they all sailed on. They sailed north into icy seas. North, north, north. They sailed south into stormy seas. South, south, south. They sailed east straight into the sunrise. East, east, east. Every time Hedgehog asked, have you seen the friendship? The answer was always no. But any time she was asked, can I come too? The answer was always, well, yes. <laughs> but after a few days, Hedgehog wanted to curl up again into a prickly little ball. Everyone gathered around her. Don't give up, said the beaver. We'll stick with you to the end. You can count on me, and me, me too. We'll find old Irving. He'll cheer you up. Hedgehog looked at the smiling faces around her. You're right, said she said. The friendship is out here. All we have to do is look. Let's give it one last try. And she pointed to an island. It was a very small island with one elephant. Excuse me, said Hedgehog, have you seen the friendship? The friendship, said the elephant. Well, isn't that it right over there? Hedgehog spun around, then sighed. Oh no, that's just my... Hedgehog's mouth fell open at the sight before her, and she couldn't believe she had realized sooner. Look, she called out, the answer is right in front of us. And she pointed straight at the sunset. We haven't tried sailing west yet. 
Everyone hugged and cheered, West, West, West. Come on, Hedgehog said to the elephant, and together they went back to the ship, where they all laughed and danced and celebrated as they sailed into the sunset together. And if any of you are wondering if they would ever find what they were looking for, the answer would have to be, well, yes. Yes, 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 yesity, yes. And there is where they sailed. And the back says, it's out there. All you have to do is look. And our scripture this morning is coming from Mark 4, verses 35 to 41. On that day, when the evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took, them, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And waking up, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Be silent, be still. Then the, wind, then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. How wonderful to worship together on this beautiful summer morning, uh, to hear the women of light. And uh, I never imagined that one day I'd get to lead worship with Maria von Trapp, <laughs> who has disappeared. I, I guess she's out uh, anyway. Uh, so uh, during my, uh, my recent renewal leave, I, I read this book uh, called The Book of Joy, Lasting Happiness in a Changing World. And uh, it uh, was based on a meeting in August of 2015 between the late Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who traveled to India to visit the Dalai Lama, when the Dalai Lama was celebrating his 80th birthday. And the author of the book, Douglas Abrams, spent a week interviewing these two men who both had won the Nobel Peace Prize. And he asked them a single question. How do we find joy in the face of life's inevitable suffering? The Dalai Lama, you know, uh, has survived more than 50 years in exile. And Archbishop Tutu had experienced such soul-crushing prejudice and violence in South Africa. And yet, these two have been known as some of the most joyful people on the planet. Though they come from very different religious traditions, the Dalai Lama, uh, a Tibetan Buddhist monk, and the Archbishop, an Anglican Christian priest, they agreed that they, there were eight obstacles to joy and eight pillars of joy. And this morning, I, I just want to focus on one of the biggest obstacles that they identified one of the biggest obstacles to finding joy in life, and that's loneliness. In the Book of Joy, the Dalai Lama observed that in his travels in America and India too, he's seen that people are very, very busy. And although they may see each other's faces and even know who each other is for several years, they have practically no connection. So when something happens, people feel lonely because they have no one to turn to for help. The archbishop referred to loneliness as a deep pain in the chest of modern life. But one that was so common, he said, that we've forgotten that being lonely is not 
normal. We are who we are through one another, the archbishop said. Our humanity is bound up in one another. We all know that loneliness is pervasive in society today. But as these two great spiritual leaders and this wonderful children's book remind us, no one, not you or me, not any of God's children, not even the prickly little hedgehog was intended to be lonely. At the beginning of the friendship, hedgehog was curled up in a prickly little ball in the lonely look, nook of a lonely little tree when she heard someone say her name. Poor hedgehog seems so lonely. I know, but it will get better. Friendship is out there. All she has to do is look. Hedgehog jumped up. The friendship is out there. All I have to do is look. And she got to work at once. This book, it echoes some valuable faith lessons for all of us. Faith lessons that we might get on board with today. And the first one is this. God created us for community. We experience loneliness in life because God made us to be in relationship with other people. And when we don't experience that, we were created to recognize that. In the very beginning, God wired us for community. Perhaps you remember in Genesis chapter 2, soon after God created Adam, the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So God formed from the dirt all the animals of the field and the birds of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man named each living creature, that was its name. But still he didn't find a suitable companion. So God put the man in a deep sleep. And as he slept, he removed one of his ribs and replaced it with flesh. And the man looked at the woman that God had created and said, at last, God created us to be in relationship with one another. In Genesis, as this story is explained, the writer indicates this special relationship between a husband and a wife, this holy covenant we were created to live in partnership, not in marriage alone, but with all of God's children. While Hedgehog builds her boat, a curious beaver asks, What you doing? I'm sailing the seas in search of the friendship, she says. The friendship, said the beaver. Can I come? I want a friend. Oh, yes, said Hedgehog, and the two set off, and soon they came upon a herd of deer. Hedgehog asked them if they had seen the friendship. They had not, but one by one they said, Man, I could use a friend. Could we come? Oh, yes, said Hedgehog. Double yes, said Beaver, and they all sailed on, and soon the ship passed by a little rat, and I just wanted to see that one again, sitting at the water's edge with a fishing line in the water. Excuse me, called the hedgehog to the little rat. Have you seen the friendship? The friendship, said the rat. No, but pretty please with stinky cheese. Can I come? Oh, yes, said the hedgehog. Double yes, said the beaver. Yes, 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 it yes, said the deer. Every creature the hedgehog met echoed the same need. They all needed friends. God made all of us to need 
one another. And when we don't have it, admit it or not, our hearts long for relationship. I think every one of us at one time or another has experienced some loneliness. And if you have been lonely, recall what that was like for you. And it If you are feeling lonely today, or if you know someone who's lonely, I want you to hear the second faith lesson from the friendship. And that is that the antidote for loneliness is open-heartedness. The antidote for loneliness is first that we would open our hearts to Jesus And also then, that we would open our hearts to others. As the book continues, every time Hedgehog asked, have you seen the friendship? The answer was always no. A lonely world. But any time she asked, was asked, can I come too? The answer was always, well, yes. After a few days, when they had not found the friendship, Hedgehog was so disappointed that she just wanted to curl up in a prickly little ball again. But her friends, they opened their hearts with love and encouragement. Everyone gathered around her. Don't give up, said the beaver. We'll stick with you to the end. You can count on me and me, me too. We'll find old Irving. He'll cheer you up. Now, in a moment, we'll return to the book and meet old Irving. But I want to pause here to think about this question. How can we overcome loneliness? In the Book of Joy, the Archbishop and the Dalai Lama both make this point, that the physical experience of being alone and the emotional experience of loneliness are two very different things. We can be alone and not feel lonely, and we can feel lonely in a crowd or when we're with strangers at a party that we don't know anyone. What's the difference? Well, I love what the Archbishop and the Dalai Lama say about this. It depends on your attitude, they say. If you are filled with negative judgment and anger, then you will feel separate from other people. You will feel lonely. But if you have an open heart, and are filled with trust and friendship, even if you are physically alone, even if you are living a hermit's life, you will never feel lonely. Douglas Abrams, who interviewed these two men for this book, sums up what they said in this way. We do not have to wait for others to open their hearts to us. By opening our heart to them, we can feel connected to them, whether on a mountaintop or in the middle of Manhattan. By opening our hearts to others, no matter who they are, we can feel connected to them. Hedgehog and all of the others certainly discovered the joy. The joy of strangers becoming friends as they open their hearts to each other. So how can you and I, living in this world, become open-hearted people? Well, first of all, we become open-hearted people as we open our hearts to the Lord Jesus. The Apostle Paul frequently uses this phrase, one another. And he describes what our relationships look like when we open our hearts to Jesus. When we open our hearts to his grace and his mercy, it impacts the way we relate to one another, he says. 
One of many examples is here in the first Thessalonians chapter 5, where Paul gives these instructions. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. God created us for relationship. God wired us for community. We don't have to wait for others to open their hearts to us. In the name of Jesus, we can open our hearts to others. And as we do, we feel connected and we find friendship. So there's one more echo of faith suggested by this wonderful little children's book, and that is the church is called to be a friendship. The church is called to be a friendship. The author Kat Yee and illustrator Chuck Gronick chose the image of a ship to illustrate our need for relationships in a world of lonely people. But in reality, as I was looking at the illustrations, I realized that the friendship looks more like a boat, a sailboat, than a ship. And I thought about that boat. You know, a boat is an ancient symbol of the church that we are called to be out in the sea of life, welcoming others to join us on board. Maybe this became an ancient symbol because of the fact that Jesus spent much of his earthly ministry in the towns and villages around the sea. And his first disciples that he called were fishermen. The gospel Sarah read for us this morning in Mark chapter 4 is a picture of the church. Like those in the boat with Jesus long ago, those of us who are called to join him in his mission, we are all in this boat together. And Jesus is in the boat with us. Here in Mark chapter 4, it says this, and leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. The message in this passage for us, the church called to be a friendship, is that those storms come into our Lives, though waves may beat against us, though it may appear that Jesus is asleep and the boat is being swamped, we need not curl up in a prickly little ball like hedgehog. Jesus is the Lord of the wind and the waves. And Jesus has given to us the same mission that he gave to those disciples in Galilee long ago. We are called to invite those who are lonely to come and to share. Not to increase our numbers, but because we are interested in one person who comes and gets what they did not have before, warmth and fellowship. Don't you love the ending of the friendship? Hedgehog sees the elephant on an island. I think that must be the Irving that was referred to earlier. And the hedgehog jumps out of the boat and swims toward the island, lifting her head up out of the water. She shouts, excuse me, have you seen the friendship? The friendship, said the elephant. Well, isn't that it? Over there, hedgehog spun around and sighed. Oh no, that's just my... Hedgehog's mouth fell open at the sight before her. And she couldn't believe she hadn't realized sooner. Look, she called out. The answer is right in front of us. As she pointed straight at the sunset. 
We haven't tried sailing west yet. Everyone hugged and cheered, west, west, west. And if any of you are wondering if they would ever find what they were looking for, the answer would have to be, well, yes. Yes, 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 city, yes. I wonder, do you think they will find more friends? Absolutely they will. Reading this, I, I remembered a quote that I saw a long time ago from Pastor Rick Warren, who wrote The Purpose Driven Life. He wrote this. People aren't looking for a friendly church. They're looking for friends. Now, of course, we are called to be a friendly church. And here we are committed to extend hospitality to everyone, whether on Sunday mornings in person or online. And in the many ways we connect with people throughout the week, extending that warm welcome. But people are looking for something more than just a friendly handshake and a how do you do. In a world of lonely people, we are called to build loving friendships. The antidote for loneliness is open-heartedness. Open your heart to Jesus. Open your heart to one another. And open your heart to those who are lonely, yearning for a friend. Let this church be a friendship where we can laugh and dance and celebrate the love of Jesus Christ, our dearest friend, and where those for whom love is a stranger will find true and deep relationships. I invite you to join with me now as we stand together and sing this wonderful hymn, remembering who we are called to be in the church.
please be seated. <laughs> Let's join our hearts in prayer. Most gracious God, as we gather on this summer Sunday morning, we thank you for your presence with us here. And we thank you, God, that we do not have to walk this journey of life alone. That you have created us for relationships. That you have wired us, Lord, to be in community with one another. And we're grateful. We're grateful that here in the church, as the people gather, and even now as we connect with others in our community online, you have connected us to each other. Lord, we thank you for the many ways that in and through the life of this church, we celebrate our fellowship together. We thank you for the gift of worship and music. We thank you for the gift of Sunday school classes and small groups and Bible studies. We thank you for opportunities to serve in mission together in this community and even far away from here. And Lord, we thank you that in all of it, you invite us to grow in fellowship with you and to grow as we open our hearts, Lord, in fellowship with one another. God, unite us in your love, especially in these days of so much loneliness and division. Pour out your spirit upon us as a congregation, Lord, that we might reach out in love to the people you bring into our lives from day to day. God, we think of those today who need the touch of your hand. We think of those recovering from all of the weather events that have happened this summer. For those impacted by the extreme heat, by hurricane and tornado and flood, we ask for your protection, Lord, and for your blessing as they join together in rebuilding. Lord, we think too of those near to us who need the touch of your healing hand following surgery or as they would recover from illness. Bless them, we pray, with reminders that you abide. And Lord, we pray too for those in our community who struggle with insufficient food or struggle to find a place to live. Teach us, dear Lord, to continue to reach out with generosity to all who need. Lord, we thank you that we are the church together. And as we sing that wonderful hymn, Lord, it reminds us again of how precious these relationships that we have are. Thank you for calling us here to be a friendship and make us faithful in accomplishing your mission. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So once again, I'd like to uh, welcome you um, here to First Church. um, And as a response, that we were made um, for community and we were made for relationship. Uh, We have several announcements that we'd like to bring before you. Uh, The first being this morning, right after the conclusion of our worship service here, we will continue with our summer missions presentations with our downtown Mechanicsburg Ministries, the 180 Ministries. Um, This will take place at 945 during the Sunday school hour in the multi-purpose room. And then next Sunday, August 6th, we'll hear from Josh and Megan Herring with their ministry disciple makers. Will they share an update with us? And then uh, on Sunday, August 6th at 7 p.m., we have the special opportunity to host Salt and Light's uh, worship team in a worship night here at First Church. Um, For those not as familiar with Salt and Light, they are a youth-based ministry serving here in the Central PA region with uh, all sorts of events and camps, and uh, many of our First Church youth have been involved with or or are involved with some Salt and Light activities events. And uh, this is a wonderful way to be led in a time of worship just with our local community. So feel free to bring a lawn chair. It'll be outside in our green space and join us in the parking lot. Well, in the parking lot not the green space, on Sunday, August 6th at 7 p.m. And we announced last week that uh, New Hope Ministries is holding its annual back-to-school event on August 8th and 9th. They are looking for specific school supply type donations, and a list of that can be found online. They are also looking for a few more volunteers to help with this event. So again, there's more information. You can visit New Hope Ministries' website where there is a sign-up sheet with all the information that you'd need. And we are still collecting items for Mission Central Care Kits. Uh, All of the items, again, we are looking for are in our bulletins and online. And then on Sunday, August 20th, during the Sunday School Hour, we will be putting together those Mission Central Care Kits that we have been collecting items for. And then here in-house, our first, our first church youth department holds its annual yard sale in August. Uh, this is the yard sale which benefits youth mission trips. We will begin to be collecting items to be donated for our yard sale. So items can be left in the multi-purpose room during church office hours. That's Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then on Friday, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, if you need help unloading your items or cannot come during the day, you can drop them off. Um, You can drop your items off between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. on Wednesday, August 9th or Wednesday, August 16th. Uh, Please contact Lisa Aronson, our youth pastor, before dropping off any larger items like the furniture and whatnot. Um, Please also be prepared to recollect that item if uh, we don't sell it or we can't be donated. Unfortunately, we can't accept the big back TVs, any outdated electronics, or any items that are just dirty or don't work. We don't really want to sell those. Um, Youth parents and other adult helpers, there is a sign-up sheet to help collect, organize, and sell those items. Um, To sign up or for more information, again, contact Pastor Lisa. Yep, that's all I have. And then finally, um, we're just so grateful for the many ways that you have been called to serve and tithe um, here with your gifts. Um, your time and your talent, and we're so grateful. Um, Without all of that, we could not be the hands and feet and and open our doors to our community. So let's celebrate all that we have and all that God has blessed us by singing the doxology. Let's stand together. Thank you so much for the ways that you have blessed us. 
for all of the gifts that you have showered upon us. And in turn, God, we give back to you. We give back to our community, hoping that we are opening doors to Christ, to one another, and to our neighbors. And we thank you. This is in your son Jesus' name. Amen. So let's sing our closing hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, number 557. So God has called us to be the friendship. And as we go out into the world, as we become aware of those to whom God is calling us to reach out, uh, may we remember these words. Yes, 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 it is, yes. Remembering that we go in the name of Jesus to love a world of people who so badly need his love. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you today and always. Amen.